I am. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Again, I'm going to ask that we... Um, Pray for Sister Mary Ann. Um, she was she is scheduled to fly down to Florida on Tuesday to uh, to visit with Chuck and Anne Marie. And uh, as of right now, she I I think she's almost too sick to fly. And uh, and the. Uh, I hate to see that happen, you know. So I'm I'm not beyond I'm not beyond praying that God can bring quick transformation in into her life, you know, that that she be well enough, you know, to to um, to uh, lift her up, strengthen her so that she can go. Um, um, and take that trip. I, I think that it's absolutely good for her. It would be good for her to get away. Um, uh, we need to pray for Norman because Norman's going to have to help her get around. You know, I, I, I chuckle at her. She is funny. She is so funny sometimes. She. She wanted me to book her airfare, so I told her, I, "There's no problem. I'll book your airfare." She changed the dates four times. Um, then she absolutely told me that she didn't want to stop anywhere, and I said, "Well, the planes stop." I did find her an, a non-stop coming home, but she's got to stop going down. There's no way to get there. Um, going down without one stop in Baltimore, and and I've Fran and I have stopped in Baltimore many many times. It's one of the simplest plane changes there is for Southwest. And um, so after I get them all booked and everything, then she calls me up and said, "Did you book me first class?" <laughs> And I said to her, Marianne, you told me to keep the tickets as cheap as possible. And then you call me up and you tell me you want first class. I said, for one thing, Southwest does not fly first class. And secondly, if you're paying 400 down and back coach, you're going to pay 4,000 first class. And she said, oh my goodness, I can't go first class. <laughs> and I said, it's all, it's all a matter of just a little wider seat and, um, and thinking that you're treated a little better because the same people in the back get on the same plane, have the same pilot, have the same everything, unless you've got somebody next to you that's this wide. Anyway, um, everything is basically the same, you know, except for the seats. And I said, you'll get there. The first class people have to get off just like the coach people. Everything's just the same. So she said, okay. And then she up and gets sick on me. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying for her that, that she'll be well by Tuesday. And um, I, I did her such a good favor. I even got her an um, early afternoon flight so she wouldn't have to get up early in the morning. Because she really doesn't like getting up that early. So, anyway, she's. We'll, we'll just pray, and she'll be she'll be well. I told Fran two days ago. I said you better call her, and find out whether she's packed or not, because 
I, I just have a feeling that uh, she'll wait till the last minute to try to pack. Amen. Amen. I am. Um, I'm. I'm. I'm standing here, hesitating, um, because I believe that I, I've, I've. I've enjoyed doing Brother Bill's book, um, hosting the presence. I think the thought is wonderful. I. I think. I think the book was excellent. I read the book in. In Mexico, I thought the book was wonderful. I thought it was a good read, but I think sometimes when we get into um, series like this, there are things that change in the midst of the congregation, and sometimes um, trying to carry on a, a a series teaching like this, as we find things are adjusting around us that maybe we can use the same themes that are there and focus off of them, but we still need to be uh, relevant to the congregation, to you as a people, to, to what's here, in the, what's going on in the midst. And sometimes I struggle in trying to balance between trying to stay with a, a, a series and and trying to get across what God is saying and what I think God is saying in this hour. And uh, I, someone, someone got a hold of me and said, you didn't get uh, um, Mercy Aiken's prayer on the web, and I did put it on the web, but I didn't get it on CLF. And I just have to tell you, because I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not equipped technically up here enough always to get things that should be done. So if someone else has it and you can put it on CLF for me, please do it. I'm, and if you really knew the truth of what's, what's happening, um, this, this um, I, I said to Fran, I'm, 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 I'm at a point of almost overwhelmed at this point with so much, so many things happening. Um, we're doing stuff at the house, we're doing this, we're doing that, and then to turn around and the car breaks. So I, you know me, I, I don't let anybody work on my cars because the last time I took the car over to the shop, they kept it all summer. And, uh, and I come to find out it, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just a, it was just a minor deal, but it's like everything else. It, it was so backed up at the shop. They had so many things that were backed up at the shop, they couldn't get to my car. And so it was there for six weeks. It happened to be we were going away. And, and I just, there are certain things I do on my car I have to do because I know that I can sit down four hours to get it done, but I don't have four hours. And so when I begin to deal... What's that got to do with you? It's got to do with everything. I live just like you guys. I put my pants on one leg at a time. You know, hopefully I get the zipper in the front. Did you ever try doing it the other way? It's really tough when I get up in the morning and sometimes when I, I, I get my pajama bottoms that are laying by the bed and I try to get them on, I get downstairs and I find out that I got them on backwards. <laughs> so it, it, it all happens to every one of us. And so we, 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 we do have things. But I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with what God is doing. I am thrilled with what God is doing. I see new dimensions happening. I, I, see, I see stuff beginning... God wants to work things in some of you that you just sat back and gone along and now God is going to begin to put pressure on you to activate. And don't say you're too old. Um, yesterday at pastor's prayer meeting, I, I didn't expect Brother Chuck to be back, but he was back. And um, so with the ministry, I made the announcement that we have 
um, set Tim and Sandra in as our assistants and set up alongside and I, I hardly got the words out of my mouth, had them pray for us and the Medukas began to prophesy and declare to us that it was not time to retire, it was not time to quit, that Moses started his ministry at 80. Um, Caleb started, said, take my mountain at 85. And, uh, and if, he said, uh, if Moses wouldn't have got angry and, and smote the rock twice, he'd have probably been 120 when he took the people into the land. And so as he began to, to share with us in that dimension, there's, there's a, a stirring. Most of you can't understand. I don't feel old. Okay. Um, Chris, Chris, Chris tickled me today. He said, uh, I love to get in the car and get there as fast as I can. Him and I are going for a ride in the vet. I, I'm going to let him drive. Anyway, but the, but the issue the issue is beloved you're, we 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 live in a world that has constantly impressed us with things and thought that everything should be the way the world impresses us with and i um I believe that God wants us to live beyond our... We'll sing these songs. It's a wonderful song we sing. We sing these songs, but we turn around and we believe something else. We t just, just because people die around us doesn't mean death has been, hasn't been annulled. And I, I, I talk to all kinds of... Christian people, okay, and and uh, I believe I believe the devil's defeated. I don't think the devil, he's I I don't think he has any power at all. He has no authority unless it's been given to him. Okay, and even the the um, wording in Luke was the fact that when he went to Jesus, he said to Jesus, for it has been delivered unto me. Okay? Who had God ever already given the authority to? He gave it to Adam. He gave it to Adam when Eve was still in him. And Adam had all authority. He was... He was given the authority of the earth. God's plan was for the planet. God's plan was for what he could work on the planet. I, I, I was just talking to somebody this morning and somebody that used to go here is so far out. They're into space age and, and, and UFOs and all that stuff. And, I, and, and, and I'm thinking, my God, whatever happened, whatever happened... It's because we forget to let God really speak into our lives and give us wisdom and understanding. We think we get smarter than God. We think we can do God. And, and I, I'm going to tell you, I love you, but I'm going to tell you something. If you want something bad enough that God doesn't want you to have, he'll let you have it. David didn't need to call for Bathsheba. Are you all listening to me? He didn't need to do that. He could have had any woman he wanted. He was the king. I've always thought it this way. She already knew that she was somebody else's husband just because he called her up and said, Hey, honey, why don't you come on up and we can spend an evening? Why didn't she just say, Hey, I ain't coming. You got the picture? You know, the, the street runs two ways. But anyway, I don't want to go there. I want to share a little bit about Brother, Brother Bill. We, I started um, a week ago Thursday night. I showed the video. 
And what we're talking about was uh, he calls this section a glimpse into the house of God. And when I walk into this room today, I see the house of God. Not you as an individual. That's where we error. That's where we error. We err in the fact that it's just us as individuals, as the house of God. He said, in my father's house, house, are many mansions. King James Bible says mansions, but the word is dwelling places. Okay? Can, can, I, can I spell it out a little bit? Okay, stand up. Monica, yeah, you. Stand up. Stand up, Todd. Stand up, Stephen. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up, Andy. Stand up, Dennis. Stand up, bud. Stand up, Cindy. Okay. Each one of these are a mansion. There's 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 a mansion. Each one of these are mansions, dwelling places. But all together, put together into a unified structure, they become the house of God. Do you understand? You can be seated. Each one of you become, each one of you as in, in, in a unit, in, in that dimension, you become the house of God. The strange thing is, we, we have been given eyes to see and ears to hear, but most of us don't understand the principle of the house of God. 90% of the church world thinks their mansions over there somewhere. They think God, Jesus is still a carpenter and he's still building. And that isn't scriptural. Jesus said he has sat down forever, sat down in the right hand of the Father, okay, in heavenly places, in the heavenlies. He has sat down. What he's building in each and every one of us, each one of us in our mansion, what he's building in us is a place of his dwelling so that when the unit is put together, when the body is put together, do you understand? When the body, as God is putting the body together, as he's unifying the body and bringing it together, it not only becomes the house of God, but it becomes the expression of God. I don't know about you, but it, you come to my house. Our house is an expression of Sister Fran. Well, you know, there are, th there are things I like, and I like what she likes. But the thing is, it is an expression of who we are. Okay? So if God is working in you to will and to do to his good pleasure, then God is working in you to become an expression, but he is not taking away your personality. See, that's where we've mistaken it. We thought that God, when it comes to personality, was going around with a little cookie cutter, and he was cutting out a bunch of little Jesuses, and going to throw them all in the oven and bake them. And that isn't the way it is. The Bible says until we all come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The minute I say Christ, 99% of Christendom think of Jesus. He is only the beginning. The head. He is the, he's the federal head. I, 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 I got all messed up yesterday because Julie was sitting there about where Dennis is and she jumped up and started unloading about all this spiritual revelation she has which her and I, her and I could drive one way on the same pathway you know so and she started unloading on 
all of this stuff that how God is working to bring us into a unified dimension of himself so that we as the body of Christ can fulfill his purpose on planet earth. Are you all right? All you need to do is read the book. I wrote down a couple of scriptures in the book of Revelation, but just leave me alone. Can I ramble a little bit? But the, but the issue is that the body of Christ, what God is building in this hour, is there to become the ruling entity on the planet. Every, the majority have got their theo, the, theology so messed up that Jesus is going to come back and he's going to be riding this big white horse, okay, with the sword and all of that stuff. First, first and foremost, we got to read and think. Jesus is now a man forever. But he's also the head of a corporate man, which is a many-membered man, which is called the sons of God, which is called the body of Christ, which is called in the book of Ephesians, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Yes. And the work and the process of that man is to bring everything on planet earth under his control. That's the goal. That's where we got to become unified in that dimension in understanding. It doesn't mean that God ever stops increasing the body. We're going we're to continue to increase. You're going to continue with the, the, the sons of God or the, the, the son of God, the body of Christ is a prophet. I said all of this before. He's a prophet. He's a priest and a king. But God has made us, say us, us, kings and priests. 90% of the ministry in the body of Christ has been as priests. Ministering the things of God to the people. But here's what God wants to do. He wants to bring a kingdom reality. Say, say we got two arms and we've only been using one of them. We got to embrace the whole aspect the whole ministry, the whole aspect of God, if we're going to reveal what the house of God is. Every local assembly, are you listening to me? Every local assembly ought to be a microcosm of the complete body of Christ. Every local assembly ought to be a microcosm. Let, let's put it this way. If, if they wanted to check my DNA, okay, usually the way they do it now is they take something off your tongue. Yeah. You know, they, they get it off your tongue. But they could take a scraping off the bottom of my foot and they would still get DNA. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So the microcosm of the body of Christ is wherever it's supposed to be established in every local setting, in every local dimension. I believe this for years and years before I ever came here. I believe that every local body ought to have the fivefold ministry functioning inside the body. Here's why. Give me chapter and verse that's, excuse me, that says you can become perfected by just pastors. Chapter and verse where you can become where you, where you can become complete and perfected by evangelists. Or teachers. Or apostles. It takes the whole fivefold ministry functioning in its place. So that everyone learns how to minister. Now I've got to stop here for a little minute. Because here's what happened in our Pentecostal charismatic circles. When it comes to minister, we either think behind a pulpit. We either think 
ministering out to people. That isn't what it means in Ephesians 4. What it means in Ephesians 4, that you minister the life of Christ. Are you all listening? That doesn't mean you don't minister to people. That doesn't mean you don't minister healing. That doesn't mean you don't do all of that. But the integral part of it is that you're ministering the life of God. Because if you read all of four, that early part of four, Paul's writing in the part of four, is bringing a people to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ. Well, I thought Jesus was complete in himself then why could Paul have to say that he has to be brought to the fullness? I, I, I'm, 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 really, I, I'm not trying to play with your mind. I'm trying to help us to understand that if we all get our focal point going in the same direction, we'll all end up at the same place. I know there's multiple ways. I know... Um, Mitch came here yesterday, and he's from Connecticut. Uh, he used to be, he grew up in Springfield, but he lives in Connecticut, and he's lived there for so long, he doesn't always know his way around. There's probably five or six ways from here I can get to Northampton, where he was going. Are you listening? Yes, but if you want to go to the shortest way, there's only one way. The shortest way. Okay. The shortest way may not be the fastest way. But it's still the shortest. Okay. If you want to get there to the fastest way, then there's another way you can go from here. But God's purpose is to take us the direction it takes to get us to where he's taking us. And so when he... When I started reading this whole aspect after I did the video and I shared a little bit on Thursday night about it, one of the things we got to come to the realization is we all together are God's house. Okay? But we are only a microcosm of the total dimension of the God's house. Because God's house is planet-wide. Are you, are you listening? God's house is planet wide. But how God does it, he sets them in the body as we choose. He does what? 1 Corinthians 12 says what? He sets them in the body as it pleases him. How we've done in, in the American church and I would like to take the time, but I, I'm just going to recommend it. I recommend every one of you, everyone that got a computer, um, Google up Kim Clement and read Kim Clement's prophecy from February 21st and the follow-up prophecy from February 28th. And we'll begin to understand a little bit where we're at. And he makes a wonderful statement. He said, God's, all God's prophets are not religious. He said, I've declared that God has made two prophets in the land, one in Israel, and his name is Netanyahu. Net yeah, I'm tongue-tied. Netanyahu. Anyway, and the other one in America is Rudy Giuliani. He said, they are prophets. He said, they're not religious, but they are prophets. I set them to tell the truth, to guide, to, to bring dimension in, 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 in all of that. But then he went on, he said, but why do my people fear and tremble? Why do my people fear and tremble? Why are they afraid of ISIS? Why are they afraid of all of this? Why are they afraid of all of that? And it's because we haven't listened to what God is saying to us. 
Because inside of this building right here, there's enough power. You know what they said about the 12? Just a few days after they got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they said they've turned the world upside down. They've done what? They've turned the world upside down. I think the thing that God would like to do with every one of us, and most of us have a struggle, I have struggles with it, I don't want God to mess with my schedule. We all got a schedule. Don't tell me you ain't got a schedule. Everybody's got a schedule. We got a plan. We're going to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this. But God could show up in here right now. He mess up your schedule, and you could be messed up for a week. Well, what about my job? What about my paycheck? What about my, what about? Are you all listening? Yes, sir. I've had to do a lot of praying. God, do this, 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 and this. And then the Lord had to say to me, no, I'm not going to do it that way. <laughs> and I've said this in here before. I'm talking about God's house. I'm talking about how God's house ought to, ought to act. I believe we all ought to pray. But I think prayer ought to become 90% us listening and 10% us talking. I think this is how God's house ought to function. And when I take a look at what Brother Bill, he, he probably teaches totally different. I know what he did. He, he used... Genesis 28. I, I don't want to go there. I've talked to you all about Jacob's ladder. I've talked to you about that. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about everyday function. I want to talk about how it works right here, down right now, when it, where the rubber meets the road, right, right now in this dimension. And, he, and his next section is almost impossible to teach in light of the house because he says his next section is, is I tried to teach it Thursday night, was the fact that God hides things out and open. But I'm going to tell you, 90% of the world, including a lot of us, God is hid to us. He's all around us. Paul in Acts 17 said it this way. He said, listen guys, they had, remember, remember he went there, it was all the, it was all the smart, smart guys, all the thinkers, and the only reason they gathered there was so they could get a new thought, they could get a new understanding, they could get a new thing, and Paul said when he walked on the scene, he said, man, I was up there and he said, he said, I see that you're, the King James Bible says superstitious. Okay? But the word is religious. He said, I see how religious you are. You, you, you worship every kind of God, man-made God there is. You worship them all. In fact, the matter is, you got an idol up there and you said, to the unknown God. He said, that's the guy I want to introduce to you. I want to introduce the guy you don't know, the guy you don't see, the guy you don't understand. Oh, and by the way, I'll let you know this. In him, you already live and move and have your being. Not when you get born again, not when you, because he is everywhere, all over, all at once. And you're in him and you don't recognize it. You're functioning in him and you give him no credit for anything. You're not aware of what he's doing. All you got to do is breathe in and he'll come. Am I, am I all right? So... I, I, and this is what I tried to share on Thursday night. God just hides in the open. 
And I quoted a few scriptures, and like Romans, it says, it says, man's without excuse. He said, God can be known by the things that are made. That's right. That's right. Do you realize that everything that man didn't make that was created by God, trees, I don't care what it is, is made in threefold. Everything is made in threes. Time is what? Past, present, and future. But God's interest is the fact that he wraps it all up and puts it in the now. Okay? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Have you got it? Baby, youth, and adult. Everything is in threes. Everything God has done is in threes. It didn't take that. You know something? It didn't take some big charismatic. You know where I learned that from? A Presbyterian writer about 45 years ago. I read a little booklet. God can be known by the things that are made. God hides himself out in the open. God hides himself inside of this room. God hides himself in there, but he wants us to seek for him that we, he may be found of us. He wants us to go after him. He wants us to look for him. God doesn't, you know, I'd really like it if you, can I tell a story? I, I am. Um, we had friends when we were in the Nazarene church, okay? We had friends and they were, they were Pentecostal folks. They had been Pentecostals. They were in the Nazarene church. I, you know, that, that's an oxymoron to me. But anyway, there was this guy that came through our, our community and went over into Canada across the river from us. And um, he went to a little town across the river from us and some of our folks went over there and they got there early to the meeting. And the guy wasn't even there yet. He'd been there the night before. The guy wasn't even there yet. And they told me they were sitting in the car waiting for him to come to open the church. And he said the first person that came to unlock the door of the church fell out on the, on the ground. The next group of people that came out, they fell on top of them. And it just kept happening. And they said, we were kind of afraid to get out of the car. And he said, before a half hour was up, they were stacked up by the front door like cordwood. Now, we would kind of like it if that's the way God would show up. We wouldn't have to do anything. Just show up, you know. Yeah, God, just, just show up. Here I am, God. But I don't think God really wants to do it that way. He doesn't want to refurbish this house that way. He wants it done out of desire. He wants it done out of choice. He wants it done out of hunger. He wants it done out of passion. He's, he is, he is got a purpose. The issue we got is we can't tell him how we want it done. Do you understand? If he wants to paint the bedroom gray, that's fine with me. Are you all right? I like a king-size bed, but if he tells me I got to sleep on a cot, that's fine with me. Because he already told me in Isaiah that he could put me in a bed that's too short. <laughs> and the covers aren't long enough. Yep, yep. I, are you listening? Yes, I'm, I'm just about done. Because I think I got to point across. We got to come to the realization we got to quit trying to tell God how we want it. Or what we want to do. Because I think when we wake up to the truth is. He is in charge. Okay. And if we do what he wants. 
we'll really find him. And we won't find ourselves in deception. Are you all right? Because the one thing I've found in life is I've made a lot of mistakes. And the reason God lets me make mistakes is because I usually learn I don't make them a second time. Or at least I try not to. I want God in this house, in a measure beyond your imagination. I want God in this house beyond your ability to think or even what you think you hear. I want God to come in this house and so transform us as a people. It doesn't just change our church services. It changes our homes. It changes our children. It changes our marriages. It changes absolutely everything. That it becomes so contagious that people will be beating a path to your door wondering what in the world is going on. Because the glory, the visible glory of God will only set on a people who are willing to give up their way. Because that he won't hide. Zion is the place where God said he'd dwell forever. We got the idea that that's someplace over there across the sea. What's going on over there is only a road map to what's really going on in the spirit world. And I can, I, I've, I've taught it here. How can, how can you deny the fact that what we call the latter rain movement started within weeks of what happened when Israel became a nation in 48. And at first, you know, you know what brother, one of Brother Bud's favorite scriptures? First the natural, then the spiritual. In the same season. And I believe that God is after Something here in this house. If I didn't see you, if I didn't see this seed, if I didn't see it ahead of time, a long time ago, I'd have been gone. But you know something? I'd have probably made some foolish move in that because God that isn't what God wanted. That isn't what God wanted. God hates quitters. You know where it says God hates divorce? That means you quit. You quit on covenant. You give up. You allow motions to get in the way. Say, Lord... We want you, however you want to show up. We want you to hide in the open. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know what the Lord just said to me? You want to find God? You all want to find God? Grab the person next to you and start searching them out. Start talking to them. Start listening to them. Try to find out what is it. There's God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God's, God don't live in rocks and dogs and trees. I mean, I, I know he, he used Balaam's donkey like, like a mimic, you know, you know. He put his hand up into the donkey and made him talk. I didn't tell you where he put the hand in there. <laughs> but the donkey talked. Huh? He said he could make the rocks cry out. 
But God's design plan was man. That's it. Say it's me, O oh Lord. Lord. You want to use. You want to talk through. You want to, you, want to, you want to show your glory. So I said this about Zion, okay? I'm going to make it. The word Zion means to be conspicuous. One of the best things you and I would ever do is do a good word study on Zion. Because you'll find out a lot of things. God said, there I'll dwell forevermore. Now what does he mean by that? There I'll dwell forevermore. You know what else he said? He said, I even there in Zion, I declared life forevermore. He didn't declare it out there in the field. He declared it in Zion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say God's house, God's house. is hidden in the open. The only reason people can't see it? Because they're blinded. Second Corinthians. Chapter 3, the world can't see. The Bible says that, that, that the Jews can't see because they've they got a veil over their face. They're blinded by their flesh. They're, they're, they're blinded by it. They can't see it. Until the Spirit of the Lord comes to their life. Until the Spirit of the Lord comes to an individual's life, they are blinded. You can talk to them till the cows come home. But until the Spirit of God opens their lives, they'll never see. Amen? That's why I'm a firm believer in it. You and I are led of the Spirit. Guess what? God will lead us to those whom we're to minister to. Amen? I love you. I, I, I'm sorry I just don't follow the book too well but I, I see something that's so practical and so real and it's an everyday thing in every bit of our lives amen, amen. amen. I want God in all my doings amen. amen Father we just thank you for this house we thank you for this people we thank you Lord what you're doing here we thank you Lord that it's beyond what we can even ask or think It's beyond what we can even ask or think. So, Father, we ask you to minister to these. Minister the house. Minister, Lord, by your spirit to them. Bring them into your dimension, we pray. Let love abound amongst us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.